I think it all revolves around small scale infrastructure and small scale designs, both for small scale plants to serve small demands and small scale plants to suit large scale demands, building large facilities with several small scale plants. The reason behind this is that we've always followed the trend of economies of scale that bigger is better. But it's possible that building large facilities with a bunch of small tra trains may allow you to have repeatability of manufacturing and actually achieve the economic benefits of modularization. I think EPCs have to be vigilant about reducing cost and analyzing technical and commercial risk. And it's not just about reducing cost and reducing risk, it's accurately estimating those types of risk. I feel the industry has a, a negative vibe because uh, projects don't seem to be coming in as advertised, and I think we need to spend a little more time in front-end front end development identifying the risks and costing them correctly. Well, I think because of the reduced amount of projects that are going to FID, I think the EPCs and the equipment suppliers are really going to have to sharpen their pencils in order to deliver their best offerings. I think you'll also see a lot of new partnerships, maybe technology providers, EPCs, and equipment manufacturers. So maybe we don't price each other out of the market and we give the best technical results at the lowest cost. Well, I think you have to do something to bend the laws of thermodynamics. Something akin to how computing power has really increased over time, but we've been able to shrink the size of computing materials and computing hardware. So maybe an example would be like a super refrigerant, a refrigerant that had so much heat capacity that I could reduce the size and scale of all the equipment within an LNG plant, therefore reduce the costs and make things more compact. Anything that would increase efficiency, breaking the laws of physics or thermodynamics would be a great stride in that area.